A very good morning to all of you and I welcome you all to in Sarkari. I hope that you all must be doing great. So, in this video, we are analyze the newspapers of 14th of April 2023. So, let's start with the Hindu first. So, on the very first page, it's an advertisement and it is talking about Telangana Dalit Bandhu, which is a unique and revolutionary scheme. And it is nowhere in the country and nowhere in the world. So basically, it is talking about empowering the Dalits with its unique and revolutionary scheme. And this is the biggest cash transfer scheme, not just in the country, but worldwide. So here, government is providing 10 lakh free grant to each Dalit family to help them set up a business as per their experience and choice. So basically, it is trying to empower the Dalit community and it is by the state government of Telangana. So... It says ki it is country's role model in scheduled cards welfare. And apart from that, you can see this statue of Dr. Bhimram Ambedkar. So the man of highest wisdom, the spirit of social equality. So basically, he's also a Bharat Ratna and it is a 125 feet tall bronze statue. And it would be obviously there in the Telangana. So when we talk about the Dalit welfare, apart from uh, providing the financial aid of rupees 10 lakhs to per family, Dalit family, it is also talking about uh, reservations in trade and businesses, scholarship for the overseas education and residential educational institutions for them. So coming to the main page, goods exports, they have grown by 6%. And imports have grown by 16.5% in 2022-23. So exports come growth rates increase hai, imports zyada se hai. It means ki jo trade deficit hai, wo increase hua hoga. And obviously, but this would also depend upon the value. So monthly exports, they have contracted for the fourth time in six months this March with 13.9% drop. So exports are following And this is majorly because of the slowdown of the global demand so the goods trade deficit have for 2022-23 it has increased by almost 40 percent from the previous year so trade deficit we know ki agar hum zyada import karenge and export kam karenge to humara trade deficit increase hoga so exports minus imports is the how you calculate the trade deficit in simple terms and Apart from this, we have a trend not just of last one year, but of last one decade and of last five years. So this this like it should be one thing. And trade deficit it is widening. So India's merchandise trade deficit widened by 39.6% in the previous financial year. As we are seeing key imports, they have jumped by 16.5%. So in this bar diagram also you can understand how uh, the trade deficit it has been performing so exports ki growth rate kya rahi imports ki growth rate kya rahi yahan pe do financial year ki figures hame de rakhi hain and accordingly jab hum deficit calculate karenge to you can see uh, it has jumped a lot so imports bahut zyada increase hue hain exports bahut marginal we can say marginally they have increased so uske wajah se we are seeing ki deficit it has increased massively and outbound shipments, basically, if we talk exports, ki baat kare, toh, they were largely led by petroleum, which has increased by 27%, followed by the electronic goods. And so these are the two major components where we have export growth. Ko mili hai. And uh, the other three of the India's top five export items that have registered insignificant growth, where we have growth hume nahi dekhne ko mili hai in terms of exports, that is rice, chemicals and drugs and pharmaceuticals so that's there and but despite the global headwinds jo hamara target tha for 2022-23 or 750 billion dollars we have uh, basically crossed that target we had achieved that target and we have hit almost at 770 billion dollars which is 94 billion dollars higher than last year's record exports so target levels humne overpass kar diye hain but still 
डेफिजिट इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो हमारी नजर उस पर होनी चाहिए हाउ वी कैन इंश्योर कि हमारा एक्सपोर्ट इंक्रीज हो और डेफिसिट कम हो साथ ही साथ अगर हम इम्पोर्ट्स भी कम कर पाए तो दैट वुड बी अमेजिंग so bbc india's foreign exchange violations is uh, under ed scanner so yahan pe uh, fema act ki baat ki ja rahi hai fema act of 1999 and apart from that uh, jo foreign contributory uh, foreign contribution regulatory association hai uh, act hai उसके बारे में जो इम्पोर्टेंट प्रोविजंस है हमें वो भी पता होने चाहिए तो एनफोर्समेंट डायरेक्टोरेट इट हैज इनिशिएटेड एन इंक्वायरी इनटू द ब्रिटिश ब्रॉडकास्टिंग कॉर्पोरेशन इंडिया अंडर द फॉरेन एक्सचेंज मैनेजमेंट एक्ट फॉर सस्पेक्टेड वॉयेशंस सो इट इज बेसिकली सस्पेक्ट ये क्या जा रहा है कि बीबीसी इट हैज आस्ड सम बीबीसी इंडिया ऑफिशल्स टू सबमिट द डॉक्यूमेंट्स व्हिच इट हैज टू स्क्रूटिनाइज एज पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोसीडिंग्स एंड so basically enforcement directorate ne bola hai so this is not the suspension and the move it uh, came about two months after income tax department in february they have surveyed the delhi and the mumbai offices of bbc so income tax department ne survey bhi kiya tha and us time pe humne samjha tha ki survey aur raid ke beech mein kya difference hota hai and उस सर्वे पे एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इट वाज लर्न कि देयर वाज मल्टीपल इरेगुलरिटीज इंक्लूडिंग नॉन पेमेंट ऑफ टैक्स ऑन सर्टेन रेमिटेंसेस दैट वर नॉट डिस्क्लोज टू द अथॉरिटीज एज इनकम इन इंडिया सो कुछ ऐसे डिस्ट्रप्शंस हमें देखने को मिले हैं कुछ वायलेशंस ऑफ द लॉ जिसकी वजह से बीबीसी इज अंडर ईडी स्कैनर एंड वी कैन से पॉलिटिकली कि जब ये डॉक्यूमेंट्री रिलीज की गई थी बाई बी बी सी विच वॉज टाइटल्ड इंडिया द मोजी क्वेश्चन एंड इट वॉज रिलेटेड टू द टू थाउजेंड टू गुजरात राइट्स तो उसके बाद से वी कैन सी दैट बी बी सी इट हैज बीन अ टारगेट बट गोइंग इन टू द ऑब्जेक्टिव बेसिकली ऑब्जेक्टिव अनालिसिस अगर हम देखें तो हमें uh, tax se related multiple irregularities mili hain to it is we can't say it is merely political uh, in nature ki it is being targeted so recently supreme court it has told karnataka government Uh, कि जो अभी रिसेंटली कर्नाटक गवर्नमेंट का रिसेंट ऑर्डर था ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग फोर परसेंट ओ बी सी कोटा उसको सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला है दैट इट नीड्स टू बी स्क्रैप्ड एंड ओ बी सी कोटा प्रोवाइड किया जा रहा था मुस्लिम्स को एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला है कि इट वुड बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अमंग द वोकल लिंगा एंड द लिंगायत कास्ट एंड इट इज बेसिकली सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला कि इट इज बेस्ड ऑन फैलिशियस अजम्पन्स सो यू नीड टू स्क्रैप दिस फोर परसेंट ओ बी सी कोटा फॉर मुस्लिम्स कोविड केसेस आर ऑन द राइज स्पेसिफिकली दिल्ली एंड महाराष्ट्र में सो दिल्ली में भी अब रिकॉर्डेड 1500 कोविड 19 केसेस हेल्थ मिनिस्टर सेज द रेडी टू हैंडल द सिचुएशन सो रिसेंटली मॉक ड्रिल्स भी की गई इन ऑर्डर टू चेक द हेल्थ द हेल्थ सेक्टर्स प्रिपेयरनेस लेवल्स सो so, अभी हमने बात करी थी कर्नाटका में जो मुस्लिम्स को कोटा दिए जाने की बात कर रही है सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला है इट इज बेस्ड ऑन फॉल्स अजम्पन एंड इट नीड्स टू बी स्क्रैप्ड सो लोकायुक्ता इट कैन नॉट प्रॉब द सिलेक्शन ऑफ द पोल कैंडिडेट्स इट कैन नॉट प्रॉब इन टू जो भी पोल कैंडिडेट सेलेक्ट किए जाते हैं इन टू दैट एंड एडवेचर बेंच ऑफ द केरला हाई कोर्ट हैज कम विद रूलिंग इन कनेक्शन विद टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन लोकसभा पोल्स केस रिलेट्स टू द सिलेक्शन ऑफ द बेनेट पी अब्राहम एज दल डी एफ कैंडिडेट इन थ्रू अनंतपुरम सो उससे रिलेटेड this is there so we are unable to subscribe to the view of the lok ayukta that selection of the candidate by a political party is a matter in which the public or the community at large has an interest so this is what the kerala high court has to say and now that's there 
So Prime Minister recalls the ancient Tamil inscription on democratic politics. So let's see which uh, inscription he's been talking about. So uh, it is like Puttanadu is the Tamil Nadu year. So he was basically addressing this, uh, the gathering on this occasion. And he harked back to the ancient Tamil culture and the various references to the democratic politics in it, stating that an over 1100 year old inscription from Tamil Nadu, it talks about the rules for the local body, including provisions for disqualifying a member. So he was speaking at this function to mark the occasion and India is the world's oldest democracy. It is the mother of democracy and there are numerous historical references to this also. So an important reference is in Tamil Nadu. So a example, a mention, agar hum baat kare, when we are saying ki India is the oldest democracy, it is the mother of democracy. So this is one thing ki there is a inscription, 1100 years old inscription. So the prime minister added that Tamil Nadu's Uttiramiyur, so this is a place, it's an uh, inscription around uh, 1100 to 1200 year uh, old. So basically not a place, it's an inscription. So the name of the inscription is Uttiramiyur. So it gives a glimpse of democratic values uh, in the country. So as it is mentioning, ki local body ke liye kya rules hai, they are mentioned in this inscription. So it was a local constitution tha of the Gram Sabha and it has been told ki kaise assembly it should run and what should be the process to elect the members. So not only that, uh, in that era, they had decided ki member would be kaise disqualify kiya ja sakta hai. So disqualification ki baad itane saal pehle bhi, we find it. And then he also referred, he talked about the Sangam literature. He said ki, it is there that we hear of the descriptions of various kinds of millets, South India, mein, which the government is also promoting in today's times. So millet promotion ke mein, we know ki it is being promoted by the government. And Sangam literature may we find the mention of millets as Sri Anna. So in this picture, you can see it is the harvest of Vishu and it is there in Kerala. So they're having a good harvesting year this year. So it is golden cucumber. And locally it is known as Kani Vallari. So that's there. And India is more caste than ever. So this is not important for us. Coming to the editorial section now. So here. So talking about the Russia-Ukraine conflict here, it is being mentioned that India, it should follow and it should push for a pragmatic solution, a practical solution we need to look forward when it comes to India's stand because this is we have seen that India is trying to balance its relations and ties between Russia and the US. But when we are going to balance it, it is important that we take one side and if we are balancing it successfully, we are not going to have so many challenges and problems. And we can do that successfully also. Until now, we have been like doing really nicely. So we can move forward with that also. And we are like neutral and not passive. So the visit by the Ukraine's Deputy Foreign Minister to India. First, such by a senior government official from the East European country since the invasion by Russia. So the Ukraine came. Deputy Foreign Minister, the, he was uh, on the visit to India. And this was the first visit after this war started. So 
basically it is demonstrating ki jo ukraine ki desire hai to build uh, tighter ties with new delhi it is pointing towards that and they also definitely want the help of india in resolving this conflict and pehle ukraine ne apna like publicly jo displeasure tha over india's position on the world they have expressed that publicly and apart from that so russia india ka historical partner hai which india has deep defense ties with and there is no easy immediate or alternative here so this is the reason ki hum russia ke sath apna ties kharab nahi karna chahte hain and we are like longer term se we have a look at things so i guess us tarike se india is moving forward and uh, definitely russia india ka bahut hi important and one of the major defense partners bhi raha hai so given all these important things and russia it is always proved india is always a friend so india do not want to sever its ties with russia so here it is mentioning ki this war it has also made india's ties with its western partners complicated as the trans atlantic powers which are led by the us they have launched an economic war against russia from which india and most of the global south have stayed away so western world ne obviously russia ke upar sanctions lagaye hain and crude oil ke upar price cap lagayi hai but uske baad bhi we are seeing ki jo global south hai and india they have stayed away they have stayed away from such type of sanctions and india is rather it is importing crude oil from russia and it the share has it has increased to an all time high so here uh, that's what uh, right now the things stand so what india has done is to try and navigate this maze of geopolitics through real politic it has refused to condemn russia maintained defense and trade ties with russia as well as expressed its uneasiness with the war also and it is called for respecting the territorial integrity of all the nations so ye sari cheeze india already baat kar chuka hai so but as this war drags on this balancing act could be interpreted as inactiveness so jo india balancing act abhi kar raha hai usko we can interpret it as inactiveness also and this year india is the chair of g20 also and also of the shanghai cooperation organization so and we will be pressed to do more to show the global leadership and help end this war so since india is chair to such important organization so it would be basically india ke upar zyada nazar rahegi ki india global leadership role kaise play karega and india ka kya contribution role hone wala hai in ending this war so is conflict ka impact obviously it is not just restricted to euro but it is impacted the entire world and there is growing consensus among the countries in the global south that the hostilities they should cease at the earliest so global south also wants this war to end as soon as possible so india's policy towards the conflict is rooted in its strategic neutrality so these are the keywords बट न्यूट्रैलिटी का मतलब ये नहीं कि इट शुड डू नथिंग एंड वेटिंग फॉर द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट टू रन इट्स कोर्स सो न्यूट्रैलिटी का मतलब ऑब्वियसली ये नहीं है कि इंडिया कुछ भी नहीं करेगा इंडिया का कोई रोल नहीं होगा एंड वी विल जस्ट वेट दिस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट टू एंड ऑन इट्स ओन या विदाउट इंडिया डूइंग एनी थिंग सो इट शुड एम्फोसाइज मोर वोकली विद द विक्टिम एंड रेज द वॉइस इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द ग्लोबल साउथ call for upholding the international law and sovereignty of all states while at the same time pushing for a pragmatic and permanent solution to this conflict so india needs to come forward and be vocal about all these things so jo hamara current regulatory system hai is it equipped to deal with artificial intelligence or not so we are seeing ki how in different areas the role 
and the importance of artificial intelligence that is increasing. So certainly kuch questions raised kiye ja rahe hai. And should we fear artificial intelligence? Is artificial intelligence any different from other disruptive technologies? So kya hoti hai disruptive technologies? We'll understand that. So technological change, it improves the aggregate productivity and the output of the society goes up because of such types of technological change. In which we see that the aggregate productivity increase ho rahi hai, to obviously productivity basically we can say efficiency increase ho rahi hai and a particular time period ke andar jitne hum pehle goods manufacture kar rahe the ab hum zyada manufacture kar pa rahe hain to obviously uske wajah se output bhi increase hoga and people today they are vastly better off than they were because of the technology whether it is 200 years ago ki agar hum baat kare 5000 saal pehle ki baat kare to definitely technology ki wajah se aaj ke time mein hamari life bahut different hai bahut zyada better and developed hai bahut zyada ease aa chuki hai because of technology so there is nothing special or different this time around artificial intelligence ki bhi agar hum baat kare so this is just uh, another round of machines which are being used to increase the productivity so aisa koi uh, we can't say ki we need to fear because of the artificial intelligence so these are these personal views you can just go through them if you want and yeah, that's there So the rules for recognition as a national party, already we have discussed all the conditions which a political party ko fulfill karni important hoti hai if it wants the status of a national party. And recently, Ahmadmi party has got the tag of a national party. So we have discussed this before. We took this thing up in Indian Express. And two days ago, we have discussed this. So we will not be repeating it. But if you have missed that video, hai, you can just go through this article so that uh, you don't miss all these important details. So, we national party, we talked about the state party, what conditions you have to fulfill, we also talked about that. And what is there any political party which has already a national party ka tag, can it be taken back to the status? Ja sakta hai? Definitely, it can be taken back to the status. If the conditions mentioned, if a political party has a particular point of time to fulfill nahi kar pa rahi hai to unse national party ka tag definitely wapas liya ja sakta hai so the rules for recognition as a national party they are specified by the commission in para 6b of the election symbols reservation and allotment order of 1968 so yahan pe uh, rules mentioned hai and that's there so so what is Dabba trading and how does it affect the economy? So this is a new term. Dabba trading kya hoti hai? So Dabba, uh, English mein Dabba ko hum box bolte hai. So box trading, it refers to informal trading that takes place outside the purview of the stock exchanges. So jo trading basically isko hum informal type of trading bol sakte hain jo stock exchanges ke bahar ki jati hai so traders wo bet karte hain on the stock price movements without actually incurring a real transaction to take the physical ownership of a particular stock as is done in an exchange so in formal tarike se basically uh, you stay outside uh, the system and aap bet karte ho on ki uh, stock prices kis taraf move karenge so since there are no proper records of income and gain is tarike se so it helps the dabba traders escape taxation so is tarike se obviously agar koi proper record nahi hoga jo bhi transactions kiye jate hain to aap jo taxation hai usse bhi bach jate ho and they would not have to pay even the commodity transaction tax or the securities transaction tax and Dabba trading, it is an offense that has been recognized in the Securities Contracts Regulation Act of 1956. And upon conviction, it can invite imprisonment uh, of up to 10 years and fine of up to rupees 25 crores. So it is illegal in India and imprisonment and fine dono lagai ja sakte hai if you are caught doing Dabba trading. 
सो ऑब्वियसली डबल ट्रेडिंग में रिस्क भी बहुत सारे हैं कि जिस ब्रोकर के थ्रू यू आर ट्राइंग टू ट्रेड सो ब्रोकर डिफॉल्ट कर सकता है इन पेइंग दी मनी टू यू एंड ऑब्वियसली इसमें कोई गारंटी नहीं होती है चीजों की बिकॉज things are informally up in formal tarike se you're doing everything so it is we can take we can say ki it is a type of gambling so that's how it is very risky and highly speculative activity so obviously iske wajah se black money ka growth bhi and usage bhi increase hoga and definitely it would uh, ultimately translate into money laundering and promoting the criminal activities also सो so, इंडिया के अंदर कोई भी एक्सटर्नल मॉनिटरिंग मैकेनिज्म नहीं है व्हेन इट कम्स टू दी बेसिकली कंट्रोलिंग या टेकिंग कॉग्निशंस ऑफ मैटर्स ऑफ द एयरिंग पुलिस ऑफिसर्स इफ दे आर फाउंड डूइंग एनीथिंग रॉन्गफुल सो इंडिया में कोई ऐसा एक्सटर्नल मॉनिटरिंग मैकेनिज्म नहीं है सो so, अमेरिका में डेफिनेटली दे हैव द रोंगफुल द रोंगफुल प्रोसीजर लीड्स टू द मिस्ट्रियल बट air in india when the police do something illegal it does not vitiate the outcome of the trial when an illegality takes place all that you may get is bail ya compensation says the retired high court judge so basically is tarike se jo police hai they try to misuse their power also and is there any loophole in article 21 which talks about the fundamental right to life an article 22 which is the rights of the accused that allows police to perpetrate violence so kya in the articles mein aisa koi loophole hai ya nahi so 1986 case mein which was the dk basu versus the west bengal supreme court issued 11 guidelines to accompany article 22 and according to them magistrate should ask the accused whether he has a medical problem caused by the police and they generally don't ask and write no complaints meaning the accused never said anything and at the time the accused is sufficiently warned by the police also so police ke dar se bhi jo jis tarike se we talk about ki third degree torture kiya jata hai to already accused ke andar itna zyada dar baith jata hai ki they do not speak up and article 22 mein definitely a provision hai ki magistrate they have to ask the accused ki unko koi medical problem हुई है बिकॉज ऑफ द पुलिस और नॉट बट दे डू नॉट स्पीक अप बिकॉज अगेन द फियर दैट दे हैव इन देर माइंड एंड अगर हम डेटा को भी समझने की कोशिश करें तो इंडिया में कुछ सालों से कोई भी कन्विक्शन नहीं हुई है इन टर्म्स ऑफ द केसेज रिलेटेड टू कस्टोडियल डेथ्स कोई भी कन्विक्शन नहीं हुई है एंड विच इज वाई बेसिकली वाई इज नो वन हेल्ड अकाउंटेबल फॉर दी कस्टोडियल डेथ सो दस इज बेसिकली यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट की पुलिस इट बेसिकली मिस यूज इट्स पावर इन सम इंस्टेंसेज एंड यहाँ पे कंपेरिजन किया जा रहा है विद यू एस ए तो इन यू एस ए यू कैन ऑल्सो सू द पुलिस फॉर सिविल डैमेज and we can't do that here in india and there is no external check also it is through the mechanisms of the government you are trying to supervise them so jab hum baat kare scs adivasis to unka jo custodial torture hai and killings hai they are much higher and in case of the denotified tribes too it is much higher as nobody is uh, nobody in the village is going to support them so in uh, as in communities ko basically target kiya jata hai and apart from that kya agar hum cctv is jails mein install kar denge to would it help in solving this problem or not so to avoid the detection police they have places elsewhere where the accused will be taken and beaten so 
ताकि ऑब्वियसली ये चीजें रिकॉर्ड ना हो पाए थ्रू सीसीटीवी सो ऐसी पर्टिकुलर ऑलरेडी सिलेक्टेड प्लेसेस होती हैं एंड दे आल्सो कम अप विद द न्यू थ्योरीज टू गेट ओवर द लॉ आल्सो एंड वी डोंट हैव एनी इंस्टीट्यूशनल फॉर्म ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन व्हिच कैन कंटीन्यूअसली फाइंड सेकंडली देयर मस्ट बी सिविल एंड सुपरविजन इन द पुलिस स्टेशंस इफ समथिंग हैपेंस दे कैन विजिट so monitoring should be legalized by the civil society in some form or the other so prime minister says ki those who criticize this mudra scheme they do not understand the power of microfinance so mudra scheme uh, ke through government has facilitated loans for the big corporate houses by calling up banks where um, they were making basically jo log facilitate karte hain big corporate houses ko they were making fun of this mudra scheme and this is a microfinance scheme of the government so बेसिकली इसमें वुमेन बेनिफिशरीज की अगर हम बात करें सो ही सेड के अराउंड रुपीज ट्वेंटी थ्री लाख करोड़ वर्थ ऑफ बैंक गारंटी फ्री लोन दे हैव बीन डिस्बर्स अंडर द स्कीम एंड मोर देन सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द बेनिफिशरीज वुमेन है सो द स्कीम इट हैज क्रिएटेड एट करोड़ न्यू ऑन्टरप्रनोर इन इंडिया एंड these are the people who have started their business for the first time with the help of the mudra yojana so india has signed a memorandum of understanding with the world food program for sending wheat to afghanistan so we'll be sending 10000 tons of wheat for the people of afghanistan and World Food Program also said that it had the required infrastructure on the ground to ensure speedy delivery of wheat to the most vulnerable sections of the Afghan population. So this is one role that India is playing. Coming to the world page. So here we are seeing. so brazil is back says lula during state visit to china so brazilian president is scheduled to meet the Z jinping with whom he will discuss the ukraine war also former brazil leader dilma rousseff takes charge as the president of brics new development bank so some political challenges political turmoil and political instability was being seen in brazil so basically now uh it is trying to reposition the president is right is trying to reposition brazil as a key global player after 4 years of relative isolation under his predecessor jair bolsonaro so asean group strongly condemns myanmar air strike that have killed dozens so asean is the association of southeast asian nations it has 10 members india is not a member of it and apart from that jo general facts hai aap log usko thoda aur search karke you can find out and read them coming to the business page we see ki so rupee trade hum agar rupee trade ko increase karne ki baat kar rahe hain for that we have watched to accounts and uh, if we are successful in this thing so this would be helping us in cutting down the transaction cost and jo hamara risk hai vulnerabilities hai because right now we are dependent upon the us dollar trade so wo kam ho jayega and 
International trade in the domestic currency will help reduce the transaction cost for the industry in several countries uh, are in discussion with the RBI on this. So rupee washed accounts, they wanted banks in India to connect with their foreign counterparts for opening special rupee washed accounts to facilitate the cross-border trade in the Indian currency rather than the popular mode of the US dollar. And that's there. So jo bhi issues hain, wo definitely address kiye jayenge. Coming to the Mint newspaper, so we are seeing ki what is fueling the record petrol demand in India. So what is the reason behind such a surge is that India has recently, it, it has consumed triple 2 million tons of petroleum products in the previous financial year, which was 10% higher than the year before. And the consumption is projected to rise even further. So in the time, mein consumption or increase ho sakti hai. And if we समझे तो पेट्रोल की इंक्रीज हुई है डीजल की इंक्रीज हुई है एंड पेट्रोल डीजल में अगर हमको पता होना चाहिए कि डीजल ज्यादा कंज्यूम किया जाता है इंडिया में हियर वी हैव द एविएशन टरबाइन फ्यूल एंड एलपीजी सो पेट्रोल एंड डीजल डेफिनेटली दोनों की इंक्रीज हुई है सो डिमांड फॉर द रिफाइंड पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स इट हैज रिकॉर्ड इट हैज हिट अ रिकॉर्ड इन द प्रीवियस फाइनेंशियल ईयर व्हिच वाज लेड बाय द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन फ्यूल एंड पेट्रोलियम प्लानिंग एंड एनालिसिस सेल इट्स सेट की कंजम्पशन इट हैज रीच्ड 222 million tons in the last fiscal. So we will understand the spike, the reason behind the spike. So if we trend, ko dekhe ki what has been the trend in the petrol products? So amount we have seen, it has increased by 10.2%. So demand, obviously, COVID-19 has impact with you. time pe bahut hi zyada kam ho gayi thi. Yeah, almost nil bol sakte hai. And abhi right now, if we look at the previous financial year, the pre-COVID levels ki demand thi, we have crossed that. And this is because of the recovery from the pandemic slowdown. And apart from this, India has so much surge in India. So the increase in the consumption of petrol and diesel and jet fuel, it came on the back of the growth in the industrial activity and travel. So as things were normalizing economy, it was coming back on track because of COVID-19. So we were recovering back. So travel activities have increased a lot. And the industrial activity hai, that is also increasing. So that's why the demand for petrol products has also increased massively. And apart from this, uh, the rise in refining, it is also in tandem with the increased crude oil imports. So refining to increase, hai, but jo crude oil imports will be increased. And this reflects a global trend because oil demand it is rising globally due to a rebound in the Chinese consumption also. So right now, there is optimism when it comes to the economic growth. So does this Ukraine war have anything to do with this? So Russia's invasion, it sparked an energy crisis, definitely. And India had to diversify its oil import sources and raise the imports for the energy security. So India ka focus is cheese pe tha ki hum apni energy security pe zada kaam kare, focus us pe rakhe. And jo hamari partner countries hai, jinse hum oil, crude oil ko import karte hai, unko diversify kare, taki jo hamara risk factor hai, jo volatility hai, volatility hai, wo kam ho. So India ne uske liye obviously uh, Russia apna crude oil cheaper price pe, discounted price pe offer kar raha tha. So India and China dono ne crude oil import kiya hai from Russia and India ne to we have, we have talked ki jo Russia se hamara share increase hua of crude oil imports, it was earlier 1% and right now it has been increased to around 26%. So that has been the trend and the impact of this war. So in the time, mein, it is expected that demand is more strong. Ho sakti hai. Ki se, this will further boost up the demand and the oil marketing companies hai, ab iska matlab unke liye kya hone wala hai. So increase in the petroleum product demand boosted the refining margins. So basically profit and according to PPAC, uh, major state run refiners, at least they have doubled their gross refining margins. So, yeah, different figures be the hai. 
so that's there and quote of the diagram dekhe so it is from the IMF managing director Kristalina Georgieva so uh, she's saying ki I am among those who know what are the consequences of a cold war. It is loss of talent and contribution to the world. And I don't want to see that repeating. So that is the thing. So right now, if we talk Cold War, ki baat kare, the best example is USA and China. Moving on to Financial Express. So RBI, it is assessing IDBI bank better. So government apna stake sale karne wali IDBI bank mein. And kuch jo potential bidders hain, RBI is assessing them. So the stake sale is in the lender. It is the first major disinvestment across the state owned banks as part of broader privatization plan of the government. And government could fetch around 30,000 crore rupees from this at the current market valuation. So disinvestment ka hume Deepam is the department which looks into the disinvestment exercises and meaning we have to know the strategic disinvestment and normal disinvestment mein kya difference hota hai. So that's there. And hum bhi isko malam hum pehle discuss kar chuke hain to baar baar isko repeat nahi karenge. So equity inflows 12 month high pe chal rahe hain and systematic investment plans they set new record. So systematic investment plans jo hota hai aap ek amount fix kar doge to aap usko ek certain period ke baad hamesha wo amount aap invest kar sakte ho. Wo bhali matlab ek har, har mahine mein aap invest kar sakte ho to ek system hota hai ek proper plan hota hai aapka investment ke liye. And equity inflows, they are at 12 month high. So that's there. And at the same time, if we talk about FPI, ki baat kare, to pe we have been recording massive outflows from the Indian market. So we have to know what is increasing and what is increasing. And the foreign portfolio investors say they are moving out of the Indian economy. So net equity inflows into the mutual funds for March, they were the highest in a year. While SIP contributions, they have touched a new high, topping around rupees 14,000 crores in March. So almost every year in March, ke mein, mutual funds ka jo inflow hai, wo increase. Ho jate. So this reason ki wajay se, we are seeing this thing happening. So India has a wheat exports pe ban laga rakhe hai, that is still it is going to continue further and uh, the Union Food and Public Distribution Minister is saying ki I could believe that we will have a good harvest despite the unseasonal rain and once the procurement period that is over it will be important that inflation is also contained and therefore it is important that the wheat exports they continue to remain banned. So main focus our domestic situation pe hai. Jab domestic situation improve ho jayegi on the wheat front, inflation front. So naturally jo ban hai wo bhi hata diya jayega. So NPS national pension scheme gets traction in the private sector. So private sector may we are seeing more people are getting attracted with this. So contribution and assets under management, they have increased by 22% in the last fiscal year. So subscribers are also increasing. And so it is gaining momentum after a decade and the government sector faces stagnation in the enrollment. So government sector, maybe we are seeing stagnation. So IVC insolvency and bankruptcy court changes are going to focus on the stability of the framework. So stability pe hamare zada focus hone wala hai and to guard against the misuse of the real estate insolvency. So MC is uh, planning to introduce the amendments to IVC in monsoon session. So monsoon session mein we'll be seeing ki jo bhi uh, amendments pe baat ki ja rahi hai, they will be tabled in the uh, in the parliament. And apart from that. So to hold consultations with RERA over the proposed amendments, so consultations ki jayengi, uske baad the amendments proposed ki jayengi. So under the reality regime, resolution process may be limited to the projects where the default it has occurred. And experts, they had however raised concerns over this pointing out that this could enable developers to take the easy way out. 
सो so, एक ये अमेंडमेंट लाने की बात की जा रही है सो डायरेक्ट टैक्स ग्रोथ इज मच शार्पर इन द फर्स्ट डेकेड दैन सिंस सो अगर हम बात करें इंडिया का डायरेक्ट टैक्स टू जी डी पी रेशियो सो दैट इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड राइट नाउ इट इज एट ऑलमोस्ट सिक्स परसेंट मार्क सो डायरेक्ट टैक्स टू जी डी पी रेशियो अगर हम इसका मीनिंग समझे इन टर्म्स ऑफ इन लाइक सिंपल टर्म्स सो अगर जी डी पी इंक्रीज हो रही है तो मतलब कितना जी डी पी का परसेंटेज इंक्रीज होने के बाद वी आर सींग जो हमारा डायरेक्ट टैक्स रेवेन्यू कलेक्शन है दैट इज आल्सो इंक्रीजिंग सो नॉर्मली यही होता है अगर आपकी जी डी पी इंक्रीज हो रही है तो आपका टैक्स कलेक्शन भी इंक्रीज होना चाहिए एंड राइट नाउ वी आर सींग दैट सो जो ये हम शार्प फॉल देख रहे हैं ग्राफ में भी दिस वॉज कोविड नाइनटीन के टाइम पे एंड बायसी फैक्टर में भी अगर वी आर सींग तो उसमें भी शार्प जम्प हमें देखने को मिल रहा है सो बोथ द थिंग्स आर पॉइंटिंग टूवर्ड्स पॉजिटिव सिनारियो एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट कंपेरिजन की भी अगर हम बात करें पर्सनल इनकम टैक्स में भी सॉरी अगर हम कंपेयर करें डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस को और कॉरपोरेट इनकम टैक्सेस से जो हमारा शेयर आता है रेवेन्यू शेयर तो डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस का ज्यादा है कॉरपोरेट इनकम टैक्स का कम है सो एक ये चीज भी हमें पता होनी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एंड डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस एज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ द टोटल टैक्स सो उसका शेयर इज फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट so we can say ki more than 50% of the tax revenue of the government is coming from direct tax revenue moving to indian express so we are celebrating ambedkar jayanti today the repeated topics i will not be taking the map up again unko repeat nahi karenge so yahan pe exports ki baat kar chuke hain jo trade deficit hai uske hum trend ki baat kar chuke hain whether it is increasing or declining so we are celebrating the birth anniversary of dr baba saheb ambedkar so it is also celebrated as a rashtriya samrasta divas so that's there so government of india is committed to make the inclusive india as per baba saheb's dream and accordingly yahan pe government ki kuch schemes mentioned ki gayi hain like pradhan mantri mudra yojana out of which 50 51% of jo beneficiaries hain they are coming from sc st and obc community and then there is pradhan mantri ujwala yojana jiske under gas free free gas connections provide kiye ja rahe hain to sc st beneficiaries but uh, then we have pradhan mantri awas yojana jisme ghar pakka houses they are being provided make in india self reliant india usme hum definitely we are moving forward on that prevention of atrocities act hai which is it has been more strengthened to provide a defined living to the communities of sc and st and scholarship to sc st students more than doubled in 9 years so these are some of the steps and schemes
सो कल के न्यूज पेपर में हमने इन्फ्लेशन की बात करी थी कि वी आर सींग की कंज्यूमर इन्फ्लेशन इट हेज बीन डिक्लाइनिंग सो दैट इज अ पॉजिटिव डेवलपमेंट एंड इतने सारे स्टेप्स लेने के बाद रेपो रेट को इतना ज्यादा इंक्रीज करने के बाद बाय ऑलमोस्ट टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज पॉइंट सो थोड़ा बहुत वी आर सींग की इन्फ्लेशन इट इज स्टार्टेड टू डिक्लाइन बट अभी सिर्फ हमने एक ही महीने में देखा है तो वी नीड टू स्टिल वेट एंड वॉच कि आने वाले टाइम में क्या ट्रेंड होने वाला है एंड ऑल जो हमने डाइवर्जेंस uh, की बात करी थी इन होलसेल इन्फ्लेशन एंड कंज्यूमर इन्फ्लेशन वो भी हमने देखा उसके पीछे क्या रीजन है वो भी हमने समझे so uh finance minister she says ki india is concerned over the global economic outlook and uh, the geopolitical environment despite this year's projected growth rate of over 6% for india's economy so she also told the global leaders during a meet here that current headwinds and the strained global supply chains they have put a tremendous pressure on the global economy so russia ukraine war to hai ek major reason and जो डेवलप्ड वर्ल्ड में वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड में हमें इकोनॉमिक स्लो डाउन देखने को मिल रहा है उसकी वजह से ऑब्वियसली डिमांड कम हो गई है एंड सप्लाई चेन्स पे जो प्रेशर पुट किया जा रहा है उसकी वजह से ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी इज डिक्लाइनिंग एंड टाइट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी फॉलो की जा रही है तो उसका डेफिनेटली नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट है ऑन ग्रोथ एंड या सो इन्फ्लेशनरी प्रेशर इतने ज्यादा भी सब्साइड नहीं हुए हैं करेंसी डेप्रिसिएशन एक चैलेंज है सो यहाँ करेंसी डेप्रिसिएशन की जब हम बात करते हैं तो हमें पता होना चाहिए डेप्रिसिएशन का एक्चुअल मीनिंग क्या होता है क्योंकि डेप्रिसिएशन और अप्रिसिएशन में बहुत कंफ्यूजन हो जाता है कभी कभी सो डेप्रिसिएशन डेफिनेटली एक्सपोर्ट्स को भी हेल्प करता है बट एट द सेम टाइम जो इम्पोर्ट्स हैं वो भी एक्सपेंसिव हो जाते हैं तो अगर हम इम्पोर्ट ज्यादा कर रहे हैं एक्सपोर्ट्स हमारे कम है तो डेप्रिसिएशन डेफिनेटली हमारे लिए एक नेगेटिव चीज है so amid the rising debt vulnerability being faced by the low and the middle income countries uh iske best examples current times mein sri lanka pakistan and bangladesh bhi hum bol sakte hain myanmar mein we are seeing ki situation is volatile so these are right now the best examples of these countries and jo global sovereign debt round table hui hai they have agreed on urgently improving information sharing including on the macroeconomic projections and sustainability assessments at early stage of the debt restructuring processes so that's all for today thank you so much for joining us and there is also a pdf link in the description box you can go through that and if you haven't subscribed to the channel do subscribe it and hit the like button for this video thank you so much